Alexander v. Yale, Alexander v. Yale, 631 F. 2. 178 Tudor, 1980, was the first use of Title Roman IX in charges of sexual harassment against an educational institution. It further established that sexual harassment of female students could be considered sex discrimination and was thus illegal. Facts The plaintiffs were Ronnie Alexander, Marjorie Riefler, Pamela Price, Lisa E. Stone, and Anne Oliverius. All were Yale College students between 1973 and 1980. Alexander and Riefler alleged that they were sexually harassed and slashed or assaulted by a flute teacher Keith, Brion, and hockey coach, respectively, and that Yale provided no procedure through which they could complain. Pamela Price alleged a classic case of what is now known as quid pro quo sexual harassment when a course instructor offered to give her and if she complied with his sexual demands. Lisa Stone alleged that English professor Michael Cook propositioned her during his office hours while putting his hand on her knee. And Oliverius alleged that the absence of a procedure for complaining about sexual harassment forced her to expend her own time and money on helping fellow students who had been sexually harassed, and that in the course of providing that help she was threatened by individuals whom she was investigating. At the district court level, a male faculty member and Lisa Stone's thesis advisor, John Winkler, alleged that the poisoned atmosphere arising from sexual harassment made a good relationship with his students impossible. He did not join the other plaintiffs' appeal. The plaintiffs did not seek damages from Yale. Rather, they wanted the court to order Yale to set up a grievance procedure for students who felt they had been sexually harassed. Decisions the students were advised by Katherine McKinnon, who had just graduated from Yale Law School. McKinnon was working on her groundbreaking book, Sexual Harassment of Working Women, and shared pre-publication copies with the Women's Rights Litigation Clinic at Rutgers Law School, which represented Alexander and her co-plaintiffs. Alexander v. Yale was an early test of McKinnon's theory that sexual harassment constituted sex discrimination. The plaintiffs argued that sexual harassment constituted sex discrimination and that Yale University was thus in contravention of Title Roman IX, which stated that educational institutions receiving federal money could not discriminate on the basis of sex. This novel legal strategy, which made use of Title Roman IX, was developed by McKinnon, Oliverius then still an undergraduate, and an E. Simon, then working for the New Haven Law Collective and now a California Public Utilities Commission Administrative Law Judge. The District Court upheld their legal argument, ruling that it is perfectly reasonable to maintain that academic advancement, conditioned upon submission to sexual demands, constitutes sex discrimination in education. The court, however, found that Price had not been sexually propositioned in exchange for better grades. It dismissed the other plaintiff's allegations as either moot because they had graduated or untenable. The women appealed. Equal rights advocates ERA and women organized against sexual harassment Wush filed a joint friend of the court brief when Alexander v. Yale was appealed. Another amicus brief was filed jointly by the ACLU and others. The U.S. Court of Appeals upheld the judgment of the lower court, holding in addition that the allegations were no longer relevant because Yale had instituted a grievance procedure. Impact Although the women did not win their case, they achieved their objectives. Yale instituted a grievance procedure, and a court held that sexual harassment constituted sex discrimination. As a result of Alexander v. Yale, most U.S. universities instituted grievance procedures for sexual harassment. The case received media coverage in the New York Times, Time Magazine, and The Nation, which contributed to the emerging concept of sexual harassment. In 1986, the Supreme Court ruled in Meritor Savings Bank v. Vinson that a hostile work environment constituted sexual discrimination, vindicating another line of argument in Alexander v. Yale. Three of the five plaintiffs and all of various Pamela Price and Ronnie Alexander have gone on to be prominent attorneys or law professors. In April 2012, 
the plaintiffs were collectively honored by the ACLU in its list of the nine most influential actors in the history of Title Roman IX.